Hi friends, this is Denair Research and welcome to the part number 6 of Cryptocurrency Statistical Arbitrage Tutorial. In the last video we began building our trading bot and started with cointegration test. Our today's goal is to find some cointegrated pairs. Here is what we have built last time. We are able to query list of all tradable pairs from Bitfinex. Then we filtered those lists to find only those pairs where BTC is base currency. And we have requested historical OHCLV data from the, for those pairs. And today we'll filter those OHCLV da data and pull price close information. And we'll organize this price close data into data frames. In order to work with data frames, we need to install Pandas. Pandas is actually a very nice data, uh, data processing library in Python. So pip3 install Pandas and hit enter. Okay, let's wait for completion of the installation. Well, finally Pandas is installed and together with pandas we have installed numpy library as a prerequisite to the pandas. numpy is a very powerful number processing library which will be helpful in our tutorial. So let's go to coding. Firstly let's import pandas. Typically it is done in the following manner. Import pandas as pd. It's actually short name for this library. Also all our price close data will be organized in data, some data frames. So let's call it final df, which equals to pd data frame. So for now, that will be some empty data frame which we'll populate later. Oh, I have to fix an error. So instead of pb, pd. Okay, let's move further. When we query historical data from the exchange, there might be some new pairs which were added recently. And these new pairs will bring us very, very small piece of historical information. So they actually are not useful in trading, at least in this strategy. So let's filter them with following condition. If length of re response is greater than 660, then we can continue. Let's create some temporary data frame from this response. So, as you remember, response is a list. df equals to pd data frame from response. And let's set index df set index to 0. Okay. This temporary data frame contains OHCLV data separated in columns. But we need only price close data, which is in column number 2. And we'll pull this price close data and we'll put this column into final DF with pair name. So let's type final DF pair name equals to DF column number 2. Great. So now we'll filter not numbers. To do so, we'll type final df, drop an a, and in place true equals to true. Okay, good. This data frame final df contains pairs names and their historical price close data. Let's print this data frame to make sure that we are doing everything right. So print final df, hit save and run the code. Let's type python3 coint pi and hit enter. This process will take certain time, probably 10 to 15 minutes, because we are querying historical data with 3 seconds interval for about 50, sec uh, 50 pairs. So let's wait. And here is our data frame. Each column is labeled by pair name, you see on the top, and historical 
price close values under each column. Well, in total we have 14 columns, which means we have 14 pairs with significant amount of historical data. First task is complete. We have nicely organized historical data in data frame. We can analyze this data and run co-integration test on it. But in order to do so, let's firstly install stats models library. pip3 install stats models and hit enter. Okay, let's wait for completion of installation and let's import co-integration test function from stats models dot tsa dot start tools import coint is actually cointegration test. In order to find cointegrated pairs, we'll take first pair data and we'll run cointegration test on with second pair, then with third pairs, fourth pairs, and till the end. Then we'll do this exercise again with the second pair as a base and we'll run cointegration pair between second and third pair and so on until we run cointegration test for all pairs in this data frame. So firstly let's remove this and loop through pair names for i in list final df and we'll create nested loop for j in list final df. So we'll take first pair and then we'll take second pair we'll compare with. But in order to avoid comparison between the same pair, we'll write condition if i not equal to j and then we'll run our test. Let's create potential spread name pairs equal to i plus j. So this would be combined name of both pairs and run cointegration test. So coint results equals to coint final df column i compared with final df column j. And finally let's print pairs names and cointegration test results. Print results. Hit save and run the code. When I tried to run the code I've got an error model not found, no model named scipy. So we need to install this scipy library. pip3 install scipy and hit enter. Probably some other prerequisites are missing for cointegration test as well, so we'll install them also. And here is quite long list of cointegration test results. As you see it is quite impressive. So what do we have in this list? Let me scroll back to the top here. As you probably remember from my cointegration video, at first number is test statistics, second number is p-value, and this array are critical values at different statistically significant uh, levels: 1%, 5%, and 10%. So let's try to find some cointegrated pairs in this list. And here is what I see. Ethereum and Monero. So as you remember our statistically, statistically significant level is 5% and p-value is less than 5% definitely here. Now let's compare test statistics and critical value. Test statistics is minus 3.7 and critical value is minus 3.3, .3, which definitely means that uh, statistic, test statistics is less than critical value. 
From this we can make a conclusion that Ethereum to Bitcoin and Monero to Bitcoin are co-integrated on 30 minutes time interval. Probably there are some other co-integrated pairs like Ethereum and Zcash and probably more. So we can use these pairs to build spread and trade the spread. Well, that's all for today. In the next video we'll talk about building spread, or less estimator and look ahead bias. Thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe to my channel if you want more videos and leave your questions in the comment section below. Bye!